Can someone on screen just wave their hand if they can hear us? Okay. Thank you, Kathy. All right. Um, welcome to the Shrewsbury Select Board meeting for July 30th. Um, so first thing we do is we usually go through our, um, it's a hybrid meeting, so we have people on, on screen and in the room. Um, this is our biggest meeting since COVID ended. So thank you all for attending. Um, so we generally go over the agenda. So um, we have first public comment at 6.05. And anyone on the screen, we ask during that, you use the raised hand feature. Um, we'll review the select board minutes from June 17th and the 25th. Uh, we'll review uh, the Council on Aging request to have their lounge returned to its original state. Um, we'll review applications and make appointments for the new Boating and Safety Committee. Um, we are not meeting with the Collins um, because the final report wasn't done for phase one. So we're going to put some that to when that is ready. Um, then the select board will vote to set in-person early voting for uh, primary elections for September 3rd. Um, a personnel board recommendation regarding the town administrator contract. Um, we'll approve the PAFs, which a personnel, um, then maybe not. No. no? Okay. All right, so we'll take that off. Um, and then we will talk about the select board not weed elimination discussion. Um, review the vote on emergency warrant for special town meeting. Review fall special town uh, meeting plans and town administrator updates. Is there anything that the, either of you have had in the last 48 hours? Oh, whoops. Okay, and there's water delivery for PFAS as well. Discussion. I'm sorry. Um, all right, so let's move on to public comment. Is there anyone in the room or online that has public comment? And if you're online, please use your raised hand feature. No public comment? Oh, okay. Frank. Oh, oh Frank. Frank. Go ahead, Frank. Uh, you're using the uh, blurred feature, and you're, you're even during when you were talking, you were all blurred out at one point. Consent, I'm sorry. That's you because blurred. you're my using. Person. <laughs> yeah, you blurred content, so no one can see you online. Okay. Oh my goodness, you're right. I just saw what happened. Okay, hang on one second. I have to yeah. give me one moment. Video. We can see video. Audio. How <laughs> <laughs> come I'm the only one? I know. Must be the know, yellow right? shirt. <laughs> Dark light. Oh, oh. see how to undo it. Hold on one second. Video. HD, mirror, adjust, oh, advanced. Hang on. And that's probably why I haven't changed it back is because I couldn't find it again. I found it. Here we go. Is that better, Frank? Yeah. Oh, that is better. I can see it. Okay. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? All right. Shall we move on to the minutes for June 17th and the 25th? 
Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes for the 17th? I make a motion that we approve the minutes for June 17th, 2024. Okay. Second. All right. Any um, edits or um, clarifications? No? That's great. Okay. Well, very good. All in yeah. favor? Signify the same mm -hmm. oh. oh, I'm sorry. I was talking in my favor. I'm sorry. So, um, so I'm there's an echo. Okay. I think it's okay. All right. Um, so, all in favor of approving the June 17th minutes? Carol, aye. Stalker, aye. Okay. Make peace, O'Neill, aye. And do I hear a motion for June 25th, 2024? Uh, so moved that we approve the minutes of June 25th, 2024. <laughs> okay. Second. All right. Any um, edits or clarifications? No, that's no. great. All those in favor? Farrell, aye. Stalker, aye. Make peace, O'Neill, aye. Okay. Um, so we'll move on to the reviewing the council and agents email request for their senior lounge to return to the original state. Um, I'm not sure. So this came to us um, from the, the council and aging had sent us a little um, email. Um, their room, for those in the room that aren't aware, they have the senior lounge in the next room over. Um, and during COVID, um, it had become kind of a storage um, area. Uh, and they've now returned to having luncheons and events in that room. So they had requested to have their room uh, cleaned out and um, returned so they could use it much, much better. Um, so, I did uh, yes. Yeah. Um, so since the re before the request, actually in July, I started working with Martha, um, and in June, um, the council on aging also had started cleaning the kitchen. They've been washing. They unlocked a lot of cabinets, and they've been washing um, by different shifts everything that was in there. And then we moved on to the council on aging room. Um, the PFAS water bottles were in there. They've all been moved in here, as you can see them all around you. Um, we will be having a smaller amount in the future. So once we get rid of this, this trap, um, that section of water bottles over to the left that was out, came out of the council on aging, that should be reduced. We have received all those cardboard boxes have been on Council on Aging. They're on their way out. We're um, going to send them to CMRK. Um, and the other items that were in there, there were signs that the town clerk had used. She had to put them away in another closet. We've gone through a number of different things. So I think at this point, um, custodian Chris O'Neill has gone in there too. I, I think he did that last night. I'm not certain, but I'm pretty sure that's where it is working. So it should be in good order for the council on aging for their next event. And I know they had they had also offered to help and to do things too. So and to volunteer. So um, okay. So I don't know that we have to vote on anything specific. Yeah, I guess I I just yeah. have a, yeah. a question yeah. regarding storage in general. Oh. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, it's 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 been a long-standing problem that we have inadequate storage, as evidenced by um, a number of, of boxes here. So I'm, and we would like to do something more with this room too. I think the select board, now that we're meeting in person, uh, you know, there was what three years that. Um, we didn't meet, it's really obvious, and, and we've had some meetings with outside people where I kind of go like, oh my God. <laughs> this, it, just, it, it just doesn't reflect well on us that you know, there's um, not kind of a, a neat meeting space. So I think you know, what, what I'd like to hear from you, Becky, and probably not right now, and, and maybe Grace, is sort of a, you know, a plan about whether or not there's a way to either off-site or even on-site if we had to, um, you know, get another storage shed. Mm -hmm. I know that's hard for for, for paper or, or a, a storage like they have the on the fire department. They have the the um, unit 
you know, right. sealed so it's a, yeah. a sealed yeah. unit. Yeah. So the and and what we'd like to do, I think the select board talked about this um, very briefly, is um, get some chairs and you know maybe another table, you know, try to and and deal with some of the um, unpainted walls so we could just spruce this uh, this room up a bit. But I think the the first order of business is figuring out whether or not uh, we have a place to put the paper. I mean, these days everything gets scanned. I yeah. don't know if we have to keep hard copies. Becky, is that something the Secretary of State requires? Yeah. yeah. So, so if we have to keep hard copies for seven years, <laughs> right? So that's um, so, that's a real challenge. And I know, you know, I worked for an agency that that had to do the the same thing, and we we stored a lot of stuff. Off-site, mm -hmm. and then when we needed it, we could. It was all, um, it was all labeled, so you could retrieve it. You know, not in a day, but it might take a couple of days. But you could retrieve it from an off-site location. So anyway, I'd like to, you know, see if we could explore that. You know, what the what the options are, and then once we, um, once we have some of that resolved, then we can talk about. Uh, what else mm -hmm. we want to do with this room in terms of just sprucing it up a little bit. Well, so also it seems to me this room, because we're with Zoom hybrid meeting all the time, we're always Zoom. We're always Zoom. Right. right. Um, we have to sort of think to me about like, it's almost like this room has to be like a studio. I mean, not, I don't mean fancy, 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 but it's, that's sort of what it is. Some absorbers of noise. Yeah, it just, it just yeah. has to be a place where you turn the cameras on and everybody can be heard on yeah. out there in the TV land can hear us and everybody can hear you know, the whole thing. The technology of it has to be done at a level that people all can easily do it and understand how it works and hear everything and all that kind of thing. So I think it's beyond, it's beyond, it's beyond just cleaning up the boxes, yeah. which is also a good idea, obviously. But yeah, right. and you're right. And we heard from we've heard from people who participate via Zoom that at times it's been very difficult to understand. I mean, we've we've worked on that. We have tweaked the owl, which everybody sees here. That's the the microphone. Um, we've tried to make it better, but it's still not. And you still not perfect. For those on on the screen, what you can't hear is there's a slight echo as, as Rita's talking. So a microphone picks up just that slight echo. So it delays what you hear with that slight echo. Yeah. And it picks up the, the ambient yeah. noise, yeah. like the air conditioners yeah. or whatever's running in the other room there. So it's it's a it's a problem that we yeah. have to figure out. So I don't know, Becky. Uh, you know, beyond the paper, which is probably you and and Grace, um, and maybe a, a select board member. Um, if we were to do something else with this room, would would it make sense to engage with the building committee, since they're all things buildings? I have a few things for you to read ahead of that. Okay. Um, okay. There have been um, the last town clerk did a, a space and storage study. I think we, that would be a great place to start. Right. Um, the different rooms have been monitored for humidity and which reflects on how they can be used. Mm -hmm. So there's information we can start with. Okay, um, great. And we'll go from there. Great, good. That sounds good. Okay, so we'll just do a follow-up at some point. Yeah, all right. Um, so we didn't need to vote on that at all. Um, so, okay, thank you. I guess we'll move on to the next um, agenda item, which is to review applications and appointments to the new voting safety. How would we like to work that? We hadn't thought about that in our last meeting. Well, this, I think we're boosting your voice. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> I hear that thing, so yeah. you know. Um, anyway, so we hadn't thought, talked about how we were going to, to go about that in our last meeting. Um, uh, well, I mean, I have just a, an immediate thought, and okay. then I'd love to sure. hear from other folks. Um, we received um, 25. Um, uh, emails. 26. 26? Okay. It was a verbal one. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, which is probably an all time record for any kind of uh, letter that we've, we've put out. Um, so, you know, I would propose, and, and it was up until yesterday afternoon, um, it was way more than um, I 
and I assume everybody else ever expected when we did the um, uh, when we prepared the agenda, we have to do the agendas at the end of last week because it has to be posted for 48 hours. So um, what I'd like to propose, and then I think we need to talk about um, the, the committee and what our thinking is about it, is that we defer any appointment until such time as we've had a, a discussion this evening and that um, we are able to then go through all of those. Um, yeah, we set that deadline not anticipating um, the, the volume of, of responses that we were going to have. So, is that we usually struggle for volunteers? So, yeah, it's, no, it's, it's new, actually it's really nice problem. to see everybody volunteer. <laughs> it's really, we appreciate that. Well, I had some just general thoughts about the whole situation. I mean, I'd start by saying that the lake is obviously, um, it's a resource for everybody in the town and, and everybody, even people outside of this town. It's obviously a, a resource that we all have to protect. We all have an interest in it. Um, it's in the town's interest, um, best interest to protect that resource. That's something we have to do, and then all the rest of the town's people do too. Um, and you know we've invested significant amounts of money in the lake over the years. We would do more in the future. There's more coming. Um, it's just the general sense is that it's a, it's a place that we all love and we all want to participate in. And I think everybody has to have a way to do that. Um, and um, the one thing I would say is that um, I, I want to make very very clear that this request for people to look at the bylaws is not a request for like, let's ban motorboats or something like that. It's just not even in, it's not, there's no predetermined um, agenda behind all this if that happened. It's just to look, it's obvious to me, obvious to the police department, obvious to people that, that we have a problem. Something happened where someone was very seriously injured, could have been killed, and well, well okay, how do we feel about that? How does the town of Shutesbury feel about that? How does the community feel about that? And well, obviously not good. So we have to do something. Um, and even if I chime in, what was that? This is this is Justin and Megan. I'm sorry. I, I I use Odin's laws just as a typical screen name. Can I chime in on that factor as far as you saying there needs to be something done about that? No, not, yet. not yet. I, 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 am, I, I agree with you that there's something should have been done about that, but it has nothing to do with us on the lake. That was Justin. something. That Justin. was something, Yes. Let's wait for Eric to finish. I'm sorry. Oh, I, I didn't know how this worked. Sorry. That looks fine. So just, just that I think that our goal, the select board's goal, is is to uh, to improve the safety for everybody who uses the lake, including the motor boaters, including everybody who uses the lake that's a, not a boater, that's also a swimmer or that's a paddle boarder or whatever your particular thing is. Um, we have to all figure out how to play in the sandbox so that nobody gets hurt and everybody can do what they have to do. Um, so that's, and we, I understand that's a problem. That it's not going to be easy to do that, but that's our goal. That's all. Um, I do like your idea because we do have a lot to go through. Yeah. And oh. um, so I, I do like Rita's oh. idea for, um, you had said, waiting until the next yeah. meeting to do that. I guess I just, I, 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 well, I think it's probably, well, it would be useful for me um, to restate what the, what the goals were. And I know it's been, um, it's been shared pretty widely through the Lake Wyola Association. We had it, I probably a town, town announced, but, um, because much of what I've seen or, or some of what I've seen in, um, in the emails we received, <coughs> uh, painted sort of a different picture. So the, the, Committee charge is to review the current bylaw and recommend changes to the bylaw to account for current usage patterns on the lake. Doesn't mean that there have to be changes to the bylaw, but to review the bylaw and if there are any changes needed. Any bylaw changes would need to be approved by town meeting. So that is not a select board um, decision. It's, it would be an article on a warrant at a 
uh, town meeting that would vote. Um, the second charge is to review how the bylaw is enforced and make any recommendations to the select board regarding needed changes. Third was identify ways to educate the public about the bylaw, including but not limited to signage, working with Lake Wyola Association in their communications with the town website. And then finally, to make recommendations to the Shoots Ferry Select Board. That is what we asked. As Eric pointed out, there was no predetermined um, outcome. And, you know, our, our goal is to give a voice to people who, all the, the stakeholders, and the stakeholders here include not only people who live on the lake. And, um, you know, we have, a, we have a state beach, we have a town beach, we have people who um, use those facilities, who are, are swimmers, who are um, kayakers, paddle board, boarders. So while I know there's a tremendous amount of um, interest and investment, there's also an investment on the part of, of property owners. There's also an investment on the part of the town. And as Eric pointed out, we have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to ensure that you know, that dam stays in place. We're, we're gonna be spending a lot more money on the dam. We deal with the public beach. We deal with, with safety enforcement with our police and, and fire department. So it's not just about um, folks who own property on, on Lake Loyola. You know, we all have an interest in ensuring that the lake is a safe, fun, wonderful place to live, a wonder, wonderful place for recreation. And, um, and, and we need to make sure that, you know, that, that safety comes, comes first. That is really important. And I, I guess the other thing I want to make clear is that, or, or just state that, you know, I've gotten a number of phone calls from folks who are very intimidated about coming forth um, and saying, stating their concerns and feeling that they're not safe. And that is, was really disturbing to me, that people don't feel safe about speaking up about their concerns. So I just want to reinforce that that's our expectation, is that everybody respects that we could have differences in, in how we approach this, but that, that there will be respect. And that our expectation is, is that this committee will work together and will be representative of both property owners as well, and, and we stated it in the in charge, of, of people who don't live on the lake, but who enjoy and, and want to continue using the lake and, and again, feel safe. Okay, thank you, Rita. Um, Eric, did you have anything else? There no, are some I, hands I, up. I, I just, said my piece. Okay. Um, there are a couple of hands up, and do we want to allow public comment on this yes, for, right. for a moment? Yeah, I see Kristen. Yes, okay. Um, so uh, Justin has his hand up on the screen, to, and I see a few hands here too. Okay, Justin, go ahead. Hi. Um, Sorry, um, not argumentative by any means to any anything that's been stated. Um, I was just curious as to what the review of the public amendment, or excuse me, of the beach or the, the lake amendments is hoping to accomplish. Like, okay, so we review this, we go over all this. What is the what is the goal? Like, what are we, what are we trying to achieve by reviewing the amendments? Uh, limiting boat size, limiting amount of boats, like or not any of that, or is it just making sure that there's a higher safety regulation, such as actually people making sure that the boats are clean so we're not infecting our lake with more bacteria that because we have signs that are broken that people come from all over wherever and they bring our boats down and we wind up with bacteria in our lake from cross contamination. I mean, are we are we talking about doing a, a more stringent like control of like outside, you know, residents bringing their boats in and potentially polluting our lakes, which does increase the inability for us to use the lake because it, it, we, we get warnings we can't use it because there's too many contaminants within the water. Um, I'm just curious as to what the 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 re relook at the the lake. Um, like what's, what's the ultimate goal? What are we trying to achieve? I, 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 I with respect, 
um, to the safety aspect. Absolutely. I mean, I, with hundred percent, I'm on the lake. I <laughs> safety is of, of the utmost importance, but I'm just curious as to what, um, by reviewing this, the, the previous bylaws, what, what we're hoping to achieve, um, by this, like what's, the, what's the end goal here? Thank you. That's uh, it for now. To, <laughs> Thank Justin, you. I think to simply answer your question, it was just a review to make sure the bylaw works. And if there's things that need to be tightened up, that, that, that may be whatever comes out of the committee. So we don't want to, we won't want to tell the committee exactly what we want to come out of it. We want to, find, to have them do the research and see if it does it still work. Does it not? And then is there uh, something that can make it better for everyone who uses the leak? So it, we don't want to give it an agenda um, starting out. We want to see what naturally comes out of the research and the conversations that the committee has. That's why we're giving it committee work. Yeah. Make, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Kristen, yeah. Um, I think just to sort of bring a caveat to that, the I think that and I, I've spoken to many of you in the room, I've spoken to the select boards individually, and I think that any time a significant event happens, which it did, it's irresponsible to not look at the entirety of things to see if there's any place for improvement. Now, there's been times where, you know, uh, people have stepped back in a briefing from a significant event and said, We've looked at every corner and aspect of this, and we don't think there's anything to improve. That happens very minimally. Most of the time, you can find improvement. So I think that um, what you are all trying to do, and, and, and I'm hopeful of this, is to look broadly and say, where can we improve? And if the answer is we can't, which I don't think so, I think we can improve, um, I know areas that I can improve. Um, so I think that is really the broad script, if I may. Thank you. There was someone here with a, go ahead. Um, George State. Abdow, yeah. North Laurel um, Drive. Um, my only point that I'd like to bring to the select board is that all in all, there was a horrible incident that happened in June, but all in all, compared to other bodies of water, which I, commonly frequent, whether it's the Connecticut River, North Connecticut River, South Lake, Congolon, Otis, any of these other bodies of water, which I go to as visitors, we have a very safe body of water. Um, there are issues that need to be um, addressed, and, and doing a bylaw review every 10 years is, is a great thing to do, because things change. But we have we, we self-patrol the area, we're in contact with neighbors, association members, direct members, I mean, there was a, something said last meeting or two meetings ago that it's, it's a very unsafe place and it's, it's dangerous and I mean every place is dangerous. There are roads outside in the front here. If somebody has an accident on the front road here and it happens once every 40 years, are we going to all of a sudden decide what to do? Again, I'm not saying that we don't need to look at things and, and evaluate everything, but we have a very safe lake. Everybody here, or most of the people here, love the lake. They want, they want it to continue. They want, they want everything to happen, and they're, they're all about the lake. People's opinions might be a little different as to how do we get there, but all in all, I, I think everybody's objective here is to have a better lake because mo most of them are lifetime lakers like myself, and um, we wish to keep things going and enjoy the place. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, just a question about uh, Stephen and Elijah. So just a question about the, the appointments. If you got 26, then you got 26 individuals interested. Is there any way to maybe, if the numbers work out, and you say you want people that either are close to the lake, outside the lake, or however it's represented, is there any way to have people that aren't already involved in other committees do that to get people involved? Because I, I see there's people on other committees that they put in a lot of time, I understand, but they're on multiple committees. So I just didn't know if this might be the opportunity since you actually have interest to bring in new people to the process and everything as well just a suggestion to tell and i guess the second thing i saw there was no legal budget for this and if we're doing bylaws what's the um what's the access to the town council for questions and everything else that will come up 
Yeah, I think if there's if it's necessary to engage with the town council, basically the um, request for the use of town council goes through um, Becky Torres, our town administrator. Um, and and typically with with um, with bylaws uh, when they're originally drafted or in a redraft um, before it goes to town meeting. Um, it's always reviewed by the um, by town council. So yeah, I would say yes, there would be access. I'm not sure I understand the first part of the question about people who are already on committee. I wasn't sure. So if you've got 26 yeah. um, people interested in say four of them are already involved in other town committees, like you know, volunteer to do stuff there. Is there any way to just have people that aren't involved anywhere that are new? On this yeah, committee, yeah. rather than re like having people do more work, if it works with your numbers as far as your demographic and diversity that you're looking for. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to disqualify somebody just because they were on another town committee. I I think you know what we want to have is a is a good is a good cross section, mm -hmm. and um, honestly, right now we don't. I think we had one or two people who don't live on the lake. I think we need to do some more outreach um, for people who, who use the lake. This is not, again, this is a, is a tremendous resource, um, not only to the, to, the, to the property owners, but to the rest of the community. And I agree with um, what was said earlier, uh, it's George Abdel, um, that you know, we all have an investment and an interest in making sure this lake um, is safe, is clean, is um, you know, is a community asset. So again, it's it's in everybody's self-interest and um, everybody in this community. And I would like to see a little bit more. Um, I, I know the Lake Wyola State Association did really good outreach, and I assume that's why most of you are here. But it, we have a we have a larger um, community too, so we'd like to see see representation. I would anyway. I don't know. No, you guys agree? Uh, yeah. Well, that's what we had said with yeah. the number of, of you know you want diversity of opinion and and use you know. Um, where people live on the lake will see one thing and someone might have a different opinion visiting at certain hours. So it's, it's all important. All those opinions are important to the process. Uh, was there another hand over here? Just I'm just curious. I, I appreciate you. We want to have external influence, external people looking at the bylaws, but for the people that live on the lake 365 days a year, we're the ones that live on it. We police it. We try to educate people. So I, I'm a little bit concerned that there's going to be a bias of bringing in outside influence for people who may use the lake once a year versus the people that are living there full time, all the time. We're the ones that are going to have to deal with the people that come in, the people that are from out of town, the people that don't know the laws, don't know the bylaws. We're the ones that are doing a lot of that kind of that work on behalf of the town to try to keep the place safe. I worry that we start expanding it to keep acquiring more and more people that aren't on the lake. Are they voters? Do they really understand what lake life is like? What what is the you know busy times, not busy times? I mean, there's so much that is. I think you know you understand that because you're there every single day staring at the lake. We understand that much more mm -hmm. different vernacular, and I think that's why everybody who's in this room here feels good about the lake. And we're very concerned that people that come in from outside the lake, they're they're not living through everything we do every single day. And that's through the winter, that's through the summers, that's through the spring, the fall. You know, we see all kinds of different patterns throughout the year. But when the lake is busy, the lake is busy two months of the year. Then it goes back to nothing. And even during the lake, the lake during most of the time of the day, there's nobody on the lake. Mm -hmm. And we were worried that people have misconceptions that this is like, you know, some energy going on down there. And it's like, you know, Lake Havasu. It's not. There's nobody there. You can drive by all the time. The chief drives by all the time. How many times <laughs> one, one boat goes by? You know, it's, there's paddlers going by. There's swimmers going by. And we're all out there to try to keep the place safe. But I'm really concerned that you bring in outside influence that don't live there, they're gonna have opinions, not facts. And that's my concern, so thanks for hearing. I agree with that. Um, I did see Jennifer on the screen and Kristen. So Jennifer and then Kristen and Anna April. Hi, um, so great that you had 26 people 
great that you're interested in more outreach and I'll do whatever I can to outreach more. Uh, I don't see inside outside people. I think we're all sort of here using the lake and but I just want and you might not be ready to address this um, at this point in the meeting, but is it possible to get a target date of when you might um, make appointments? Um, or would it be put off indefinitely? Thank you. I wouldn't want to put it off indefinitely. I think we could do it either at the next meeting or the meeting after that, depending upon. Um, I know you're not here at the next. You're no, not, well, I'll be here remotely. You'll be here remotely. Yeah. Um, so um, maybe maybe we do it at the at not the next meeting, which is August thirteenth, thirteenth, yep. and then we have August twenty seventh. Yeah, um, yeah, we could shoot for that. Yeah, maybe time. maybe by at the by the end of this meeting, we'll talk about it about which which meeting. But one of those two meetings. You know, are you guys wanting to do the the committee? I I don't see putting it. I don't see putting it on hold. No, I, no. I wouldn't put it on hold. No, I think no, no. Thank you. Hold on. I, oh, I said Kristen. Kristen. Uh, I'll I'll yield to oh. April first. Oh, April. I think April. She I'm sorry. <laughs> We're out of practice and in person. Go ahead. April Stein Montague Road. I don't live by the lake, but I love the lake, and I'm in the water, by the water, on the water, as much as I possibly can be. I also moor a sailboat up at the Harriman Reservoir in Wilmington, Vermont, where there was a fatality there this early in the summer, a speedboat. There are no speed, speed regulations on that lake. It's much bigger. But somebody hit an object and was thrown out of the boat and was killed. And, and that's, I think, our worst fear. My question is, directed to our chief, is there any way to resurrect our boat? The, the, ah. the boat. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, I don't do motors. Yes. But is there any way that a presence on the lake and at different times could be done just to slow things down? And I was thinking, instead of a little dog, if you could get a Labrador. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to talk to my husband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Is there a way, you know, could we put a, a somehow a, a dock at the land we own at the Cove to park a boat there for this summer? Are there, there's just mm -hmm. ideas. Is there a way? So to we do that? definitely have brought that up. Uh, so I'll answer that first, and then I want to, if I may, get to a couple other points. Is that okay? Yes, great. Um, we have definitely been talking about that. Uh, the boat, uh, I believe, is uh, able to be resurrected. Um, I think that it's going to need to be serviced. We've been um, looking at that and thinking about that uh, because, yes, I think that's an important presence to have on the lake. Uh, there's a, there's some, some things in that and staffing and stuff like that that I am going to be moving forward with. I mean, we have some great staffing right now. This is everybody. Knock on wood. We're doing great right now, but we could do a little bit better with that. That being said, I'm not personally comfortable, and I never was in the past when I heard about this, that a police boat is parked at someone else's private property. I feel that there's ethics uh, potentially involved with that. So I think that if we are going to do something like that, we may invest in then a police slash fire, hi Lenny, um, a boat ramp to have different vessels that we have available to us uh, because it is very difficult to put it in the water and take it out of the water every single time you want to use it. Um, so there is that. Um, and we are looking into that, um, trying to make that work within the confines of our already limited budget. Well, just as a follow-up, is it possible to look at the land we own at the Cove? On the Cove, you know, work with the um, Conservation Commission and Planning Board perhaps. Yes. Put a dock there. Yes, I think, I think for sure. I mean, any type of communication that moves us forward with great ideas is a conversation I definitely want to have. Um, but it's not because I don't trust any of you to hold the boat. It's that I don't want anyone to say, um, well, 
she she gets special treatment because she allows the police vote there. I don't I don't want that. Um, so we're going to avoid mm -hmm. that at all possible costs. Um, I want to go to uh, Matt and say uh, we've had some awesome communication over the years. I have not had a lapse in a liaison for the Lake Association in a few years now. Uh, there's always been somebody to be able to talk to, Mr. Abdel. I always am emailing everyone, and that I'm very, very appreciative of. There's something that I have been trying to protect, um, and that is that nobody feels like they are an outsider. So I'd really love it if we could change the terminology um, because I'm technically an outsider, but I spend more time with you all than I really do at my own house. This is also my home, and I have slept here, by the way, <laughs> um, when we've had things happening. So um, I think that I understand the concept that we are trying to get each other to understand. Voters don't not don't uh, non-voters don't understand voters or voting. They don't understand the culture. They might not understand the rules. You know. Then there are people that paddleboard, and I'm an avid paddleboarder. I have not yet gotten it on Lake Wyola, but that will get there. But and and I think that some people don't understand my needs as a paddle boater when I'm on a lake and water becomes super choppy and things. There is so much room for communication. That's all I'm asking everybody. Please, let's not turn this into one against the other. Let's just remember that this we want everybody to enjoy the lake. And yes, we do want to protect the homeowners on the lake as well. Mr. Abdel, there's just one point I wanted to bring up to you. And um, I, I hear some, and, and I could be very wrong, but I hear there's a, some emails that I've received. There's fear, right? We don't want change that doesn't need to happen. I'm certainly not looking for that. But I will tell you this. Um, what, a couple weeks ago, Lenny, we had a rollover tractor trailer at the bottom of Prescott. We haven't had one of those in town in, I've been here in six years. It's been a very long time, right? So what we did when that happened was we took a step back and said, how can we improve? So yes, when an accident of substantial nature happens, we do take a step back and look and see what we can do to improve. Got together with um, fire department, really didn't have much to worry about, but got together with Steve, and we started talking about potential new signage. What can we do? So yes, that actually does happen. We do take a step back and look at all of it to try and improve constantly. Um, did I answer everything? Yes. Yes. I see two more. Uh, uh, okay. I have a question. Sure. I'm Don Lair here. I live on Shore Drive. This is for the chief of police. Okay. <laughs> Why is it you do not need to take a boat safety course or have a license to operate a boat? When my wife and I brought up here, one of the first things we did was take a boat safety course. So how come somebody 18 years old buy a big motorboat, bring it up to Lake Wyoming or any place else, go flying around there? Has no idea what all the regulations are. There's no one who's supposed to have a you know, spotter. I see a lot of people from Lake Wyoming with no spotters. So, how can the state does initiate some kind of a rule regulations to have a license? Thankfully, that is very far above my pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and I also have the question I have questions on why we don't have stricter regulations for other things as well. I think. Uh, that could be a great letter sent to our representative or our senator um, as a group email saying, why do you need to look at this and we need to have this. This is something that's very important. Um, and I do applaud. I have received emails where I've gotten letters from parents saying, my son, my daughter took a boat safety course. That's, a, that's fantastic. That's what we want. We want to encourage people to do that. But that is about my favorite. You know, some of the problems I see in Lake Wyola, uh, is people are doing things because they don't know anything up no better. Yeah, like, and that's what I think they were saying over here. We're policing the area and getting the education yeah. out. Right. <laughs> um, you know, uh, I, I have some plenty of other ideas that I'm going to be bringing, um, you know, potential videos and links that we can put on our website um, to have people pay attention to what we currently already have. 
and maybe who they can go to if they have a question. <laughs> Um, I do see two questions on the screen, and I see a few hands here. We do want to tighten up because we have we have a lot more agenda to after to after this too. So let me go to Frank on screen, and then I'll swoop around the room. Thank you, Melissa. Um, I'm confused a little. Um, my property the GIS goes underneath the lake, but the state owns the lake. So I'm confused with Justin's comment saying outside influences. If the state owns the lake and it's a state park, why wouldn't we want outside influences? Because it's a state park. That's my only question. Yeah. Um, Can I respond? I one one no. second, Justin. Go ahead. Frank, um, the state does not own the lake. Um, the lake is a great pond which by statute, state statute, requires that it be kept open to the public. That's a requirement of the state. So when we talk, you know, when a suggestion is made, are we going to keep folks out or are we going to keep people out? It's against state statute to do that. This, this lake needs to be, um, have continuous public access to some extent. Thank you, um, Becky. So that means outside interjection public access if i even massachusetts citizens that's outside access is that correct yes thank you you have access as, if you live in boston you can still come to our list so outside access is in, encouraged thank you okay um i do see one more on the screen so i'm gonna go with megan and then we'll do the room one more time and tighten it up Thank you. Um, I have a couple of questions. Um, you know, since you're going to be delayed in selecting the um, committee, would it be possible to understand what the violations of the bylaws have been prior to that selection process? So we kind of understand what we're what we're dealing with here. There still has been no clear communication what's been violated. So I don't know what needs to be fixed. You know, what, what are we fixing here? Um, <clears throat> And that's your first charge of this committee, whereby I think education and communication should be the focus. Your your charges after the first bullet are very valid, but I, I mean, I feel like we're jumping the gun here. And I think it's also a good thing to bring up that there is a Lake Association meeting on the books next week. Why not start a communication process with the community? to address whatever is necessary to be addressed. Why not work together to make improvements? There's low hanging fruit that we can address. The signage is bad. Why don't we address that? That we could put buoys in. There's very, very quick things we could do to address rather than dividing the lake community and a committee which is going to be unfairly selected. <laughs> I mean, I see your com I see your face there. And I, I mean, I just don't know how you can choose a committee and be fair given the circumstances here. Well, you know, we, we feel that it's fair. We are the governing body of the town of Shutesbury. Um, and that's just the way it is. But there's so and many biases that have already been set forth in these meetings. A lot of bias Megan, there are a lot of biases on both sides. So, I understand that. So know. why not start by having a community approach rather than, you know, five mm -hmm. folks that have their own agendas? That we are having a community approach by making sure we have a good cross section from the community. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, just to clarify real quick, Chief Burgess did ask. And is going to be speaking at next week's as well. Great. Okay. Oh, thank you. First of all, and second of all, are you going to be picking this committee live, like, like during your meeting? Yeah. Yes. We have to do everything. Yeah. In open meeting as a board, we can't interact okay. with each other. Just, other just yeah. To understand yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what I assume. Yep. Yeah. Um, we'll take these couple. Go ahead. Uh, yes. We'll have to Tracy, we've gotten some ADT short drive. I, I, I do live over at Lake. Um, I just wanted to point out that the Lake Viola Association isn't responsible for the safety of the lake. Um, it's a, you know, it's Lake Bio Association is, is an environmental organization. It's not a, um, a boat safety organization. A lot of people who 
are on the Lake Royal Association are boat owners, that's true. Um, but there's a lot of people that are on the Lake Royal Association that are members that aren't boat owners. I happen to be one of them, and I have a kayak. But I think that it's really important that the, the distinction between the policing of the lake be very clear that this would be a town and environmental police, the, the town police and the environmental police who are responsible. It's also my understanding from the environmental police officer that I spoke to that if the town has a home rule bylaw, which can only be stricter than the state bylaw, the state you know, voting law, then the environmental police can't police that. For example, we have a 30 mile an hour speed limit for the town, and it's a 45 mile an hour speed limit for the state. The environmental police can't come here and enforce the 45 mile an hour limit. Um, and so, you know, when, so it is important that we do get the vote back up. <laughs> They also they also told me that they would help train our police. They did tell me that. I don't know if that would be helpful. <laughs> but um, I think it's really important that we not be putting responsibility. The environmental police officer told me they could train people. But um, Rick Chang. Well, I don't know. Any, I don't know if he. I, I mean, I don't think he was making a judgment. He was just saying that they do that. They do outreach and that. Um, but I think it's very important that we not consider the Lake Wyola Association to be policers of the lake. They could educate with a safety card that has legitimate information on it. It has some information on it now that probably should definitely should be removed. But um, but in terms of policing, I don't think that we should be considering that to be the case. Okay. Uh, one more. I think you had your hand up, and then we really have to move on. Okay, real quick. I was just a little confused. You had 4 p.m. yesterday the deadline for the letters of interest, mm -hmm. and you didn't get the cross section you wanted, so you're going to wait around until you get, the, you're going to open that back up. It kind of seems like you're shopping around now. I think that might have been what the comment was. You put a deadline, so we went with that, mm -hmm. and now you're going to reopen the deadline to, to get more of what you're thinking. That's, I think, what the concern mm -hmm. is. It, it, maybe that's just you know, I think I, when we put the charge together, we said we wanted um, representation from uh, from the Correct. The, the balance of the community. We didn't get that, and that's, you know, that's our prerogative to um, to try to get more of a cross section. If we don't, we don't. Okay. It just seems if they weren't, if people aren't interested, then trying to kind of go around and, you know, ask, can you do this? Can you do that? You know, what I'm getting at. So it just seems like people, you had the deadline. If people weren't interested, they're not interested. But the people that were interested took the time, did that, mm -hmm. um, the meeting. Seems like you gave time to lobby. Um, Linda had her hand up, and I, I missed this one. So this is the last one. We will. If you have any other questions, please email us. We do get to see those. Um, but you don't respond to emails because of the open meeting laws. Okay, go ahead. Um, I just want to. I, I'm reiterating what many have said. Tracy brought out the same point. So did Matt. So did um, Archie. So did George. Education is such a key. Years ago, um, and, and we've been on the lake for over 30 years, years ago when um, some of our kids were younger and they spent more time on the lake, the Lake Wyoming uh, Safety Committee actually had people who went out and approached people who were doing things that were unsafe on the lake to educate them as to, and, and virtually every one of them, did not know anything about the rules. So science was important, but there's so much more now because there aren't necessarily more power boats, but there certainly are a lot more paddle boats and um, kayaks because those are portable. People can bring them and put them in. They put them in on private property. They put them in at the beach. They put them in on the boat launch. None of the, many of those people have no idea that there are laws so education is such a key. We can't enforce, this is right, the, none of the Lake Association people can enforce anything, but we certainly have tried our best to educate, and we need more. Is the library so, uh, educating the people who are borrowing their kayaks? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. All right, so this is one of the parts we would love to hear more comments, but we do have a full agenda tonight. So um, we do appreciate these. Any other comments, please do email us. Um, and we will um, 
have this back on our agenda most likely um, later in the month. So um, thank you all for coming. We appreciate it. Okay, so our next item is the select board vote to in person early voting. Oh, okay. Oh, yes, you can just, yes. We just continue on. People can we'll give you a few more. That may be something to say. September 3rd primary at 25% of my usual business hours. In reality, I round that up a little bit. We always go at two hours a day. That seems through trial and error to be uh, sufficient to meet our needs without uh, going way, way overboard. And me having poor, innocent poll workers who just sit here for hours and hours and hours with absolutely nothing to do. Can I ask a question? Yes. What is exactly 25% of your hour? It's like <laughs> just an it. hour like, and hour? like 13 minutes or something. Yeah. I, so I work okay. for 25 I'm hours a week. Minutes. It's okay. I was just curious. It's very specific. Yes. Yeah. She works five hours a week. Okay. Yeah. Um, and why? Who sets this? Is it the Secretary of State that requires? Uh, so the Votes Act, which was passed in 2022, uh, required town clerks to hold in-person early voting for 100% of all usual business hours unless a town has less than 5,000 voters, in which case the town clerk can request that the select board vote to set the mandatory minimum at 25% rather than 100%. And we don't need 25 hours right. of in-person early voting. Right. And um, when does it start? It starts August 20. I just wrote this down because I just uh, finished writing up the web page for the September election. I want to say the 24th okay. um, and goes until August 30th. Oh, so it's just, it's just, a it's week. just one. Yeah. For yeah, the primary, okay. we just have one week of in-person early voting for general elections, which we'll have in November. It's two weeks. Okay. And would we do the same thing? Would we have a same thing in November? Okay. I have I have been asking the secretary's office if we can do this vote once a year or something, and then have it count for all elections in that year. Oh, I, I haven't gotten any clarity back yet. George, could you ask people just to move out of the hallway? So, it's really thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do we have any other questions for Grace? Um, no, no, no. So uh, I guess I will make a motion that um, the select board set the in-person early voting minimum hours 
There's a September 3rd primary at 25% of the town clerk's usual business hours. Yay! <laughs> Second. Okay. All those in favor? Farrell, aye. Stalker, aye. Make peace, O'Neill, aye. Okay. Yay! Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. Do uh, you want me to stay up here for the morning or? Um, no, we have one other thing in between, so we'll okay. have remove you from the hot seat. <laughs> That's a great idea, though. Someone's coming, yeah. put them in the middle. Yeah. That's a good idea. I'll remove that from there. I like this setup. Yeah, you like it? Mm -hmm. um, I have some quirks I've written down to work out. Okay. Um, so moving on to the recommendation from the personnel board to the select board for the TA contract. Um, do you want me to do that or you're welcome to since you're the chair and you're well, here? It's basically when we were reviewing contracts for the year that we've gone over, it came up in one of our meetings, I think it was our, <clears throat> excuse me, our May meeting. Uh, can somebody else go, I'm, I'm missing my voice. <laughs> This is April. Go ahead. Okay. Take your water. I'm sorry. Do you want to start with my water? No. I'm <laughs> Might not solve it. No, it's it's essentially, fun. I think I'll try it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So oh. essentially, it came. Oh, thank you. Sorry. It came. It came up at uh, uh, one of our meetings that well, all of the things the police contract and other contracts were done and taken care of by the end of the fiscal year, except for the school issue. The contract that was on that and the administrative secretary um, issue uh, contracts that hadn't yet been done and had been work that we've been working on it. So I have, you have been working on it for quite a while. The town so, administrator. Yes, not yeah, yeah. administrator, sorry. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, what ever more, we talked about the fact that we're making it. Maybe if we had a personnel board representative and a income representative, maybe having a different contribution to the negotiations, would that help? Would that be maybe would that be needed at this point because this has been going on for a while? And April, you have to go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I just want to say. For as long as I've been involved in contract negotiations, which I think since many years, is that it's, it's traditionally, I don't think there's a policy, but traditionally a representative from the select board, finance committee, and um, personnel board have worked together. And it's absolutely within your right as on the select board, you know, you are the ultimate hiring authority and contracting authority. But given that six months without an a contract and right now, and this isn't about the person, it's about the position. We have a, an employee at will as our town administrator, and that leaves the town vulnerable to if, if that person were to just walk away. Um, we wouldn't, what would we do? We wouldn't have a town administrator in a key um, position. So that's why uh, it seems like it's stuck and the board recommends uh, hopes that we can maybe look at the process again and, and help with this process so um i know that i i'm on the personnel board um the select board member of the personnel board and so i in that meeting i there wasn't much that could be said when we were having the discussion because everything we've done is in executive session um so we can't um we can't talk about um, those conversations or the outcomes of those conversations um so knowing this was going to come up on our um select board agenda tonight i reached out to donna asking her what we can share um and her result was, well, it was an executive session, so there's not much we can share. Um, I did ask her some questions um, about the, um, you know, we have had a contract for the TA position. That's shoot brace, because that's what shoot brace had. Some towns do not have that. They have an at-will. Um, and she said that um, it's perfectly okay for the position to be at-will. Um, the one uh, couple of things that 
um, she said that we could state is that we had gotten to the end of the negotiation mm -hmm. and at this point to bring in extra um, people and begin it. That's not where the select board necessarily is, is willing to go at this point. Um, part of the recommendation was also to look at the um, going forward, so future contracts, including FinCom and uh, the personnel board. And she felt that the select board sh or and personnel board should look at that as a practice and see if, if that is take some time to look at it and see if that works. Like, what does the personnel board person bring? What does the FinCom person bring? Um, and reminded me uh, that the select board is the one who signs the contract. And even in a negotiation where you have one come out, the select board does not have to sign that contract um, and can reject it um, or can assign it, right? So she reminded me of all of those, those practices that we would do. Um, and also that the select board at any point can negotiate any contract that they choose to do, you know, um, in the way that we had done this one. Um, so that was kind of, and so we can't really share much more than that. Which is fine. You know, we're, yeah. we're looking at a process. Yeah, right? yeah. Not, yeah. not, yeah. not, yeah. not yeah. the concept. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. Um, yeah. yeah, so we do have some concerns. I mean, we, I think it was more, I think it was many meetings we were kind of watching and seeing that it wasn't happening, but we knew the fiscal year was coming in 99, the fiscal year was going to solve it and it was going to get taken care of it. And so it was a surprise to us last week or two weeks ago to find out that it wasn't. But it is, it's important that personnel board is there because there's personnel policies here at stake, uh, at stake that are really in play. What concerns me is the fact that the contract hasn't been signed means that there's some sort of negotiation going on. Typically, it's, it's salary, um, or something is trying to be added to the contract, or something being taken out of the contract that the, the town administrator isn't, isn't comfortable with. I just want to remind everybody there are other processes and policies for the personnel board to deal with certain things. And I don't know what the thing is, but for instance, we don't tie pay increases to performance because everybody gets. Uh, the same increase no matter what. You can negotiate and you have a new contract if you're one of the contract employees under contract, and then year two and three of your contract typically is going to be based on the CPI policy that you have in place. So that's one of the reasons why we've never tied those two. The other thing is performance. When there's performance issues, we've again never tied that to the contract because contracts happen every three years and you can't wait three years to address a performance issue. Um, and we also have a goal process, and it's certainly, um, again, you know, anyways, and we have a goal process as well. So if you're expecting something new or different, you know, typically the contract is like the job description. It has the job description. Everybody's signing off that this is the job, these are the things that have to be done. It has some more specific details because there are specific details, especially if you're the fire chief or the police chief, and I'm sure for that can be a town administrator as well. So if there's these other things that are causing this to be hung up. You know, that's one of the reasons why I was hoping to be involved or have somebody from the first time going to go home and not even more action. Not as of the last meeting. No, well, and I've been on the personnel board for a long time. And we, I've been here when we instituted a lot of these policies. And I just want to make it clear there are a lot of things that we decoupled from um, the salary increase and the performance and goals aren't necessarily part of the contract. So if any of those things are going on, we have mechanisms for dealing with those and mitigating those. So I just, you know, I, I'm with April in terms of it's a little disconcerting that we didn't have a contract at the beginning of the year. And yeah, I certainly wouldn't want to see our time. Oh, it's my belief that the town administrator will retire someday and help us recruit and train a new hire. And so um, no, diggy, diggy. what I want to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, I haven't. Um, okay, we're good. I need my participants page. Okay, everybody's muted now. Um, um, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. Yeah, um, a couple of uh, reactions. One is, um, I think we jointly take responsibility for not engaging with the personnel committee and the, the finance committee at the outset when we made a determination that this is how we wanted to. Can you go around the other side to push them that way? Oh, 
Just a little bit. Jesse. So I can throw in some bread. Jesse. Um, I can't get it to you. <laughs> we don't want to hear it coming next there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> can you mute yourself? <laughs> Um, so that, so that we neglected to do that and that I, I think we all take responsibility for and, and, um, should have, should have done that. Um, should have done what? I should have engaged with the, if the, if we were going to do the negotiation in a different way from what has been done in the past, um, that, uh, would have been good to communicate that because obviously um it was it was different and uh and i personally still think it was the right thing to do um i feel like the the town administrator that this select board has the most um contact um with the town administrator whether or not we would like pull somebody in occasionally in retrospect yes maybe that was you know that would have been wise to do um, but we're here now. What I'm hearing from you is that Donna's saying you can't change it. Um, and again, I think I can. No, she just she had, she had she had she had advised that we had she had advised that we had come to the end of our at the end we had come to the end of the negotiation. Um, we can't share more detail would be helpful, but we can't share no, that no, detail. No. So, um, yeah, okay, but know, not, but, in, but pulling up that we were at the end of our, oh, I see. yeah, the okay. RT, I there was still. no active, active okay. negotiation currently going on. The okay. committee's not active at this point, and um, that the, the purposes, um, I'm just reading what she just want to double check, make sure I get it right. Um, that the purposes for the contract negotiations have we have completed the negotiations. I see. Um, okay. And what and and this she also remind us that not every negotiation comes out with a signed contract. So, so a question. I, I, well, can I? I yeah. just have one more thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I personally am equally distressed that we don't have a contract. Can't say more. Yeah, it's hard so not what is the select board's plan? If the town administrator leaves tomorrow, what would your plan be? Because I, I think that's really. And I excuse me, I rise to a point of order. Uh, hang on, we're having a discussion with the personnel board and the I select board. I understand, I understand that, but I rise to a point of order. Do you ask them? Yeah. 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 What is it? So, in a normal meeting, people who are speaking identify themselves. That is not being done in this meeting. And when it does not happen, it has the appearance of an inside click running the town. And I don't think that's the best appearance for the town officials. Okay, so if you decide not to be rose. Could you hear that? Personnel board too. I think, I think for, um, and of course I, um, I think for myself, I think uh, it's hard when everything is an executive session. Um, I think that the process that we did choose in this case, I think was, I think was the appropriate process. Um, that the, the, there was the, um, 
and we have done it before because we it, the select board has negotiated uh, contracts prior. Um, one of them was the, with the fire chief. And yeah, that I remember. I'm pri prior to when the uh, we don't know when the practice of having a personnel board and a fincom or other people started. So I think that was important to know when it started and what was happening prior. Right. Um, just as a historical nature, if we're going to discuss having the, the the committee be you know of those um, groups, I I I I I think the process that we did was was. I stand behind what we had chosen to do um, in this case. Do either of you? One can think of how, you know, given the executive session nature of things, I mean, how can we talk about this? <laughs> we'd have to. So if we, if so, here's so if we invite others into it, we'd have to have an executive session because I think the three select board members, at least I would, still want to participate in in, yeah. in us as a team in that. So if we go forward, it would have to be an executive session. Well, maybe we should do that. Maybe that's what we should say. That's the answer to the question. You know, I mean. Talk to other people, invite other people like the personnel boy, the finance manager, whoever, the representative thereof, to a meeting to an executive session where we talk about uh, where, where we are. So I, think, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm sort of stunned, frankly. <laughs> um, I don't see who was first. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, um, name? George Robinette, yeah. Finance Committee, formerly of the personnel board. Um, that's what we're all doing. Was that you would have an executive, that you would be somebody from the personnel board and somebody from the finance committee, and that you know, the chairs of those committees, and probably the ones you reach out to, would be invited. We are very curious, and you know, of course, we're very curious what might be going on, but I also wanted to say that um, I know you feel justified in what you're doing, and I'm sure, I'm sure you are, but we do have policies in place that have been, we've been adhering to for quite a while, and it's not always. Obviously, there's something extenuating here, I guess I can say, but um, it's not always fair to the employee to change the process. I mean, all the employees in the town are treated the same way, and the process is pretty much the same. And so, you know, I just want to point that out, too. I, I think that's that's important, is how we treat the town administrator. But I, you know, that's it. I do see another personnel board on camera. It's, it's Kathy. Hi there, thank you. Um, I, I'm the newest um, member of FinCom and I'm also the liaison to the personnel board. And so my cohorts there have pretty much covered everything I was going to say, except I wanna add that I agreed, even though I'm new to this, um, to this work, I agreed with the recommendation that they wanted to make to the select board that um, someone from FinCom and the personnel board be included in these these conversations. I get that many times there are personnel issues or questions that require executive session. <clears throat> I've worked for years in, in HR and I get that work, um, but I'm really hoping that going forward, we can have that kind of collaboration if you, you decide that it makes sense. That's all. Uh, Susie. Um, name. name, Susie Dollinger, <laughs> um, Finance Committee. Um, I can't see, I haven't heard anything so far in this process that says um, the select board can start the process that used to be the best practice, which is having three members. Um, and when you have those three members, they can talk to each other because they're not solely from one board. Um, and they can, um, because, because they're not on a, um, they don't need a quorum of any one of the three. And I, I feel like that process probably evolved and has been in place. And I believe that three heads are better than one and they represent different views of town government. And so I would suggest that the process get restarted with the practice that had been the best practice before. 
There was another hand. Oh, yeah. Rob, Rob. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're okay. Okay. Rob? Thank you. Rob Kibler, 74 Pratt Connor Road. I'm not an expert on town law, but I do know there was not a personnel board meeting posted for tonight. And yet I think you have a quorum of that board there and are discussing uh, their business. I, I see somebody shaking their head, but before you proceed, can we make sure that this is not a violation of an open meeting law? They're speaking to us. They're not speaking in amongst themselves. Is, is that permissible? I mean, have you run that by town council? Is that yes? Because yes, you have, many and that is Don, that is Donna's legal opinion. That don't this, speak among ourselves as long as that quorum doesn't speak among themselves. So select board members struggle with that because we oftentimes will go to a meeting and not know the others are there and not every meeting needs to be a select board meeting in conjunction with their meeting so as long I, as if, if Rita sorry, and i are in the same meeting, if i don't speak to Rita and we don't talk together we only speak to the committee members of the committee we're attending it's fine it, it's not it seems to it seems to me that having people there discussing it with you is in fact deliberation whether they talk to each other or to you and then exchange ideas back and forth uh, and i know that when the planning board has met with you it has been a joint meeting i know when the concom met with you it has been a joint meeting and scheduled as such so I'm asking why this does not fall into that same category. Those were planned meetings where decisions were being made of both committees. It sure sounds like decisions are being made and the uh, personnel committee is influencing the select board's uh, procedure and process. The, uh, thank you, thank you. Um, the, so they make it a recommendation to us that, that, that has been presented in an email. They've attended, but it's it. The person that has to make this decision would be us. The personnel board does not make the decision in this case, and they are speaking. What you can't see is they are speaking directly to us. They're not talking amongst themselves in the room, and they're answering our questions. All right. I would not be surprised if someone registered a complaint. Oh, I great. won't do it. Thank you. I just I have to get going. Okay. Will you guys please make sure you sign the warrant before you yeah. leave tonight so we can post it first thing in the morning? You Grace, can I ask you, do you have any input on open meeting law? Oh, input on open meeting law? Uh on this question. Yeah, sure. On the question that has I mean, been George raised. George is not a member no. of the committee right. anymore, so he doesn't right. count for a quorum. But there is a quorum. It's a quorum. Is there a quorum? I'm, yeah, not, I'm, sure sure I'm not sure who's on the Kathy. No, but Kathy, right? Yeah, Kathy. Kathy is Kathy. So there's Gavin and George. One thing I want to point out, George R. Ryan's finance committee, one thing I do want to point out is you're acting on a recommendation by the personnel board that was voted at a personnel board meeting. Right. And this deliberation, or whatever you want to call it, is each of the members are giving you a perspective right. on it. Right. That's all we're doing. Yeah. We are not deliberating no. amongst ourselves anymore. We but you're not voting. Under, right. yeah. under an open meeting. Right. Uh, in your own minutes. Um, any other questions in there? I do see Amanda. Thank you. Um, a couple of things. The first thing is, I think that as long as a quorum of any committee is present in discussing things that are within their wheelhouse, within their jurisdiction, I think it's supposed to be a posted meeting. So you really should check on that. The other thing is, I believe you said you're done with the TA negotiations. So you will be releasing those executive session minutes soon. Is that true? 
you'll be at least meeting and voting on them soon, right? Um, that's a good question. I don't know if that falls under an exemption. No, we have to conclude that. Right, we have to conclude it. We yeah. haven't concluded it. So we haven't had a meeting to conclude. It's just not active at the moment. But didn't you state earlier that the negotiations are done? She's now a employee at will. There will be no contract signed. So no, that's send not it, conclusive. right? That's not conclusive. No, it's it we're not actively meeting. So we've hit a final point, but but we have to it the outcome isn't so no, we haven't finished the complete process, but we're not actively negotiating. That's uh, so that's all we can share, Allison. Sorry. So you'll be having more executive session meetings on that subject. Is that what you're saying? You're planning to do that? It certainly might be. I mean, it's either over or it isn't, right? So I'm just one. I'm just trying to understand what you, what you mean. So we're not, so it's not, the committee is not active at the moment at this point, but the, but um, I don't know that we could call it complete. <laughs> we well, can't share that, Amanda, just because it's an executive session. So. No, I understand you can't talk about that stuff right now because they haven't been released. So what I'm asking is, when can we expect that to happen for you to meet, vote on it, and either vote to release them or not release them? I don't know that we could just, we can't come up with a date for yeah. that. Yeah. I don't think we have an answer. Yeah, yeah. that's not okay. something we can. All right. Well, okay, but I'll expect one soon. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. This is from uh, Peg Ross, Monday Bureau, uh, Personal Board. Um, can I ask how long have you not been active in meeting on this? Yeah, the last meeting we had was the 20th. 20... No, nope. sorry, June 25th. June 25th. June 25th. Yeah, June 25th. Yeah, June 25th. Mm -hmm. um, does the select board have do we want to think about this one more? Do we want to make a, a motion? How are we doing? Sure. Do we want to think or discuss more? Well, it seems like maybe we should have an, an executive session with ourselves and the personnel board. And, well, we have representatives in the personnel board and finance meeting. Are you recommending that? I guess I'm recommending that. Okay. That, you're making a motion. I'm making a motion. How do you know? Because <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like one. <laughs> sounded like a motion. Do I hear okay. a second? A second. <laughs> okay. Um, any further discussion or questions? So if we were to do that, it's the three select board members and then one person, a designee from the personnel committee and a designee from the FinCom, which you guys would vote. I assume the, the they would need to vote. The finance committee would need to designate somebody, and then the personnel committee would need to designate somebody. Okay. That was the yeah. only question. Okay. Yes, yeah, that's all that works. So at their next meeting, we can get those on those agendas. Um, okay. So all in favor? Errol, aye. Dr. Aye. Thank you, Sonia. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Okay, so moving on to the next one. Um, it is the knotweed elimination discussion. Eric, Eric. Well, my thought was simply that um, when we, the, the previous discussions we've had about the whole knotweed issue was that part of the issue, part of the thing we should be doing is getting the whole town involved in it. We don't want it to make it a select board decision or whatever, a board of health decision or whatever that comes down to and says, this is how we're going to deal with it. Um, 
it does seem to me that we should, my thought is that we should have like basically, like instead of have a, a letter effectively, it says the town, maybe we should meet with all those, all those committees together first or something to say, hey, look, this is this is what the plan is. And this is what we, as a, as a town, the committees that are responsible or potentially responsible for this, the Conservation Commission, the Board of Health, we have voted on this policy. And that would just give more oomph to it, I guess, if you want to say that, to, to, uh, to that law. Because I know it's going to be pushed back for sure on the whole issue of um, like whether or not we should use Roundup and stuff like that. So, I mean, if, we had, if everybody was behind that, um, that would be good, that's all. That's all. It's very simple. So, so Pam Sasuke is here, and Pam did the presentation with Mary Jo um, Maffei back at our at our last, last meeting. Is that right? Yeah. 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 Um, so I just had a question for you, Pam, and that is, um, I think you and Mary Jo were going to put together some sort of a plan. Oh, you have a plan. Draft proposal. Okay. For I only made two coffees okay. this month, currently. Okay. But it, I think it's front and back. It isn't just the draft. There's still wording issues in the the uh, plot. The uh, not weed sites have not been identified yet. Yet, Oh, okay. So, um, so I think it's a it's a great idea for us to get everybody yep. on board. Um, once this is finalized if you were to give this to us then we could i mean we could either do it in a meeting but but you reached out to the board of health I and the, i reached we reached out to all of the parent committees that we, we thought would be relevant which was the uncom yourselves the uh open space the town highway department and the Board of Health, maybe? Board of Health, yeah. Might have been somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> there was quite a few, but as, as you saw at the last meeting, you guys were really the only ones there. there I think there was one with somebody from somewhere else, but I think it was a new one. Yeah, well, anyway, yeah, yeah. And Steve came. And Steve. Yeah. So what if we, if, if this got finalized, then I suppose we could invite them all to a meeting, or if they didn't want to come to a meeting, that they get the plan and we're just looking for an endorsement. So we reach out to all of them yeah, and right. say, like you to endorse we'd it. like you to endorse this. Yeah. Does that, that, that make sense? That makes total sense to me. I think one of our biggest concerns about um, Steve Sullivan um, Spring is that he is concerned that he's going to get a lot of pushback. Mm -hmm. And so we feel like we want to do whatever we can to support him that he's doing what he's being asked to do. So however the support comes, whether we put together a little, you know, flyer with information and, you know, here's some information on why we're doing this and I don't know. We we haven't thought different scenarios, but that was one of the scenarios to give him something to like hand to whoever is distressed about it and say I don't know, give information, provide information. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, so the critical piece when we have done this in the past is that ahead of any spring that the area is reviewed by Concom. Absolutely. And whether it's an RDA or a notice that it's not required, that that be the first step. Absolutely. So just having a, you know, that's why I'm concerned about a, a policy. Concom can't support a blanket policy on the right, policy right, could be that they will they will support they will it right. if, if support it, when people yes. when areas come so you can make Identify. it contingent a contingent on their fine, approval obviously. right but it's not going to be uh, oh, uh, really uh, good. Uh, right uh, right for <laughs> no. and you know yeah, yeah. These, we don't want that and right. I think we need that needs to be clear in the plan okay that, that those steps are number one yep um and then we can move forward absolutely with potential spraying that. because 
Yes, Bob, we want to educate the whole town. Our, our biggest concern at this point is that our highway department have tools in place to take care of the right of ways all through town and along our roadways because that potentially is how things spread from one property to another. And that would be the strongest first step. So um, I know we talked about a map and and right. Penny's talked about some sort of overlay. Penny Jakes talked about some sort of overlay with um, the State Wetlands Protection Act and sort of where you right. guys have identified that and, and that we would be concentrating on, on public land first. Yes. So um, what do you think the timing is on um, having that? I think probably in the next week or so we can probably get us that together we'll have to get the assistance because we're really busy with the library and everything so um then maybe penny will have some time and we can look at the map after we've picked the sites and make sure that what we think without the concom are sites that would be applicable and then bring it to the concom and then they can look at that because penny said that there are sites that are not on that map that are wetlands yeah, so it's right. just the map it's only an initial guide right so that's why we need the con to mm -hmm. to look at that and make sure that we're doing the right thing okay so does it make sense to go to the con first with the kind of with the plan in place and then we all sign off on it but that they're in agreement about process. Um, whatever you think. Okay, Becky, I'm looking to you because yeah, um, I think that's what I you were suggesting, yes. right? Yes. You were suggesting that they, that they need to review the plan ahead sure. of okay. trying to get, you know, as it's still a draft. Okay. And Absolutely. also, you know, get their input on it, the, the best process. But I think it, it will always be getting their review on whatever area needs to get sprayed up. We can add that in there. And it's in, I started a letter to the CONCOM, but it, it will go with the proposal. Okay, great. So we have a plan. Thank you. Thank you. Plan about the plan? Plan about the plan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, thank Pam. Thank you. Okay. All right, moving on to um, review and vote on emergency warrant for a special town meeting. I don't think I've seen it. Yet. It's actually, I got it in the Google Drive. I just got it down today. Yeah, I didn't see it either. I just have to find my little. Uh, I didn't open that up. I think that was my intent. Mm -hmm. My drive. Hey there. And to special town meeting. Is there something you can share? My turn. Yep. Yep. So there's two in here, Becky. Um, the, the motion and the warrant. But you want the warrant. Let me bring it up. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. It's going. It's the in-person thing. Let's see. I'm gonna um, go back to the take it outside. <laughs> Thank you, Susie. We're gonna get like a poker or something. Yeah, right. <laughs> it worked. In the first track. Oh Next. shoot! What's that? Um, we are seeing. Okay, there we go. All right. Oh, it's because Eric's in it also. He's reading to us. Yeah, oh. he can see my. Yeah, he can see my thing. <laughs> Your name is coming up. Okay, it Eric. Is. Yes, as you were going. Okay, you're looking. So Becky, give us a rundown. Okay, so uh, we had an important, an unfortunate oversight at annual town meeting. At annual town meeting, Article 13 was the PFAS debt article for $150,000 loan. This would be our second loan. And we are um, in dire need of the funds. We're near, uh, I, you know, once I match up all the last bills, there will be no, no money left whatsoever. 
Um, but what happened at the vote on April 27th is the moderators did not count the vote. We don't have notes or any proof that we had a two thirds vote. Um, I talked with our town council who was at the meeting, who double checked her notes and they say, um, clear majority. Clear majority does not pass a two thirds vote. And the town meeting, um, the assisting clerk was taking the minutes and she recorded the same thing and no one caught it. So this, I confirmed with Donna after she checked her notes, the situation we are in is Article 13 failed at the annual town meeting and the only way to make it good is to be voted. So um, we put quickly together with the, working with the town clerk who is under the gun with elections and the primary coming up. And we counted the dates and we found that this date it, we can do right away for August 15th. That's a Thursday. Just checking. August 15th. It's a Wednesday up there. So is it the 14th? Oh, we change, changed it at the last minute. Is it the 14th or Thank you, Susie. Well, we have about four typos now to correct in this okay. warrant article. But that's why it's a draft. So. Oh, it doesn't say. Oh, does it say Wednesday? No, it just yes. says. Is it Wednesday oh. the 15th? Oh. And you said Wednesday is the 14th? Yes. Yeah. yeah, so Thursday is the 15th. So we'll correct that to Thursday. Okay. Um, we, can, we need to post it tomorrow, um, which is the Wednesday. I believe we do have, because it's 14 days, if it's not posted tomorrow, we still have Thursday. So we have a backup date, but we have Christine, our, our um, constable, should be here at 10 to sign it if the select board is so willing uh, to move ahead with this special town meeting. Can I, can I ask a question? Yes. So the select board signed an agreement with the police union for the next special town meeting to have a vote for a revolving fund for their details. This is that next town meeting. That's not on time. But we can't do it because we will, that would have to come from free cash and we will not have certified free cash okay. until. Right. I until just wanted to make sure because we did make yeah. that, yeah. that agreement. So. Yeah. And where it says there requires two thirds vote. Didn't he start the meeting with saying he could establish that? But he didn't do it. There's no record that he did it because he okay. verbally said clear majority. I, I, we can't establish that. Okay, I get it. We don't and have a video. <laughs> we don't have a video. And the official minutes have been turned in and we can't change the official minutes. Okay, I sorry. think we could have, if we had, if the Donna's notes had been different, we could have made an argument that that what she that's why she checked them so it doesn't have to be counted because that doesn't say it has to be counted it either. does not have to be counted but he has to say this was a clear two-thirds vote yes. out loud he has to say yeah. that okay but and, that i'm sorry oh okay. i was just going to say what's a um, what's a quorum for a special town meeting nine, nine. okay <laughs> there are one two three <laughs> <laughs> and it will be a counted vote oh, no, we only have Eight. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> but that's when you run next door and grab a sandwich. Okay, so um, are there further questions? No, that was my only question. Okay. No, no, I just remember. Yeah, no, I no, was very is, concerned is, uh, and, and we did. Oh, and what then we thought through the problem. And what does the place say on this one? Because that's another little oh. detail. It's there. at the school. And does it have to be at the school? Um, you could make it simpler by having it here because it's not going to be a hoard. I can guarantee that. What is I mean, you have to reserve the pleasure. place. Yeah, I, I mean, it seems so like it makes more sense to just do it here. It does, I think. And, and the other concern I hadn't gotten the custodian, I mean, they, they're hoping, but if the floor is it's not, not ready to get yeah, 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 in the yeah, kitchen, yeah, 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 they won't, will be right. meeting 
I think we just did the dishwasher. Dish yeah. No, we just, you know, <laughs> you think? <laughs> to find time. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I think here is fine. Yeah. We can so, set it yeah. up. We wouldn't do Zoom anyway because we don't do our town meetings on Zoom yet. So, so it's oh, Thursday. I'm edit and oh, I'm sorry. Here, I'm let me sorry. take it down. Oh, no, I have this shared screen. You're trying to, sh I'm going to yeah, unshare. Sorry. Oops, I'm not going to unshare. What am I going to do? I don't know if it's Hold on your, I think you're the only one who can edit it. No, it, because it was on my screen. Now you can open it. Oh, there you go. You're yeah. trying to edit my copy. That's what. Okay, so yeah, I think we do it here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I'm going to put that on my calendar so that we don't. You said the 15th, right? I'm just that was Susie yes. Mulcher. We're <laughs> getting through them. Oh, okay. good. Okay, Nothing so we want. Okay, okay. All right. So. Oh. Shall we move on to the next item, which is um, review, uh, which is also a special town meeting uh, plan? Um, the reason for this item is no, no, that was me. Okay. Um, <laughs> we have a number of items that require special town meeting. Um, the most important, well, the one that the select board holds a contract requiring them to do is the police private duty detail fund, the new fund um, to uh, allow them to get paid for private duty details in under three and a half months, which is the current problem. So um, they've, so that's the first item. We have um, Mateo Pangalo has um, put forward a non-resident voters article that is different than what had the uh, what was brought to the annual town meeting, and I I would like if Mateo's here if he might speak to this. Where is it? Oh, there. <laughs> um, hi. So this is uh, because apparently, according to Donna, the wording of the um, citizens petition article from the annual town meeting constituted a resolution as opposed to authorizing the legislation. So this would um, essentially take the input that we got from the resolution and frames it in language that authorizes the home rule petition. Um, this is drafted in line with what KP Law recommended in 2020 to the Massachusetts Municipal Association about how home rule petitions should be framed in a uh, town meeting warrant. And the language includes the specific legislation and it's modeled off of Leverett's legislation um, that was introduced last year um, by Senator Comerford. So that's what this article would present and because it would be coming from the select board as opposed to a citizen's petition, it would have the added advantage of being vetted by our town council to be sure that it is in line with what the uh, voters asked for uh, at the annual town meeting. Okay, thank you very much. Um, there was, there's another item, there was a miscalculation in the budget um, that amounted to about $1,100 in the assistant library um, clerk's uh, line. Um, it's, all, it's one item within, so that there'll be a request to fund that as to the original calculation. And CPA. CPA. We anticipate. The, the region is asking and inquiring the, our um, CPA committee about and um, funding the track. So that track um, funding question will be on CPC. Uh, CPC is now said, uh, going to be meeting with Amherst in a earlier cycle to help accommodate getting this done for the timeline the region has been setting. <coughs> but we're not talking about the town meeting until after free cash is certified. Correct. Correct. And, and the, before Thanksgiving, but in November after the elections. Okay. So this is just a preview. Yes, this is. Um, so
So will we send out um, a notice to all town committees to see if there are any other and and staff see if there are any other articles that are need need to be reviewed outside of the annual town meeting cycle. Okay. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And I don't know if this falls into uh, the, did we have to vote on the warrant, didn't we? Yes, we have to vote on the warrant. <laughs> yes. Oh my God, Grace, that's why she. Right, right, right. She's scared to leave. Okay. Um, do I hear a motion to approve the warrant for August 15th, 2024, special town meeting? So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Farrell, aye. Stocker, aye. Make peace and aye. Okay. And we need to sign that. Can we sign that? Oh. The request we'll is please don't leave here until I print this up. Okay. Make sure you make those in. Yes. Okay. That's why I have to make <laughs> yes. the edits. Okay. Have make the edits. Right. All right. Um, and then, so the next thing on here, which isn't on my copy, I think was the water delivery for PFAS. So, um, how this how, I, I did some research and and I know uh, Becky had had emailed and said that there isn't anyone currently I think no one getting bottles of water however on the road, on the road. Um, so we had raised concern that there was that, that there was a town employees delivering water lifting those heavy water bottles and and um, learned also in that process that there are some town residents that are picking up water and and um, uh, lifting those 40 pound bottles of water. So one of one of our things is risk management is one of our jobs. And so I made some phone calls um, to Berkshire Water. Um, I thought we were having more people have water delivery, but I think this is still pertinent because of this PFAS issue is going to be ongoing, right? We don't see an end in sight. So um, I talked to Berkshire uh, Water and they will deliver to each house for the cost of three dollars per delivery. Um, so they will take, um, and the water cost is still the same at the nine twenty five per bottle. Um, I'm proposing that we, for future needs in houses with the PFAS that we've identified on Levitt Road or in that general greater area that need water, that we have the water water coolers all delivered from Berkshire Springs um, to save time on our, it's really to save injury on town residents for picking them up, the town employees. Um, the cost is minimal. I did divide it out. I don't know, Becky, I kind of guessed how much it might have been for if you were delivering water, I kind of did it on a half an hour sort of basis, and it's 18 to $35 for you to deliver it. Um, and only three dollars for um, the. I would drop off water on my way home. Uh, I, I, I'm just what I'm just. If you put it, it's just to to do the cost effective and the cost of how much it is for an employee to do it versus how much it was for um, the delivery company to come and do it for for theirs. Um, and they, they have the they have the insurance, they have the training, they have all of the things that keep them safe um, to to do it. I'm worried about injury. Those bottles are very heavy, um, stairs and uneven ground, um, lifting them um, for both residents and uh, town employees. So I was wondering if the select board might support that given that the fee is low at $3, plus they do rent the coolers. So if something breaks or such, um, and they take them away with them. So we don't have a stockpile of coolers. Um, and they have other rates too. So, uh, anyway, so that's my proposal. I can make up something a little more formal if anyone wants to see it. Um, any questions? It's just to keep people safe. That. Yes. Okay, so I've been working with Berkshire Water for about eight or nine years. Their staffing, um, like if I try to get an order in or change something, it'll take a number of calls because their staffing is better now, but it's I used to not I asked be able about to those people. questions too. Yeah, but my experience has been if I get a lab report 
that says I, the person needs water. I can't, you know, for Berkshire Springs to establish through their dispatcher a delivery under that situation, which is most of the situations I have delivered water, I won't be timely and so the person I won't. So I did think about that. So I do think about that. So initially you can bring them water from the town hall. I'm talking about the ongoing deliveries of the water. Okay. Right. Um, I did talk to Berkshire Springs. They did tell me all they needed was the names, the addresses, and one contact so they know where to, to drop the water. They would build a town hall for all of that and it would all be um, uh, set up on a spreadsheet or however we want to give it to them. Um, and they would set everything up and it would be seamless. Um, so, so this would be for everybody that we now that the and anyone that comes up. So they already yes. deliver to the highway barn. They deliver here. Um, it would negate the bottles of water just here in the empties. Yeah, you know, it, it, no, it, it uh, solves a lot of things that we have had noticed. Clutter. Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> and it's it's the injury. It's it's a workplace safety thing. It's really workplace safety, resident safety. I mean, if a resident was to hurt themselves, um, the town would be. Um, Paying for that injury, uh, likewise, if a person is a if an employee injured themselves, so it's really just for that risk management. So can I? Um, so all these empties that are here now, how in our they've been returned. Quest. They've been returned from. Oh, so yes. what are you asking? Yeah, oh, yeah. I am yeah, asking is how they're going to get how they we're going to get them they, cleared out. They pick up the empties when they deliver when I order. I see. Okay. But they could, you're saying they could deliver directly to the And houses. they can do it automatically. So they can do it automatically to the houses too. So they don't have to call to each order. They can, you know, say once a month, four bottles, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, but you don't have to call each time. It can be established and it can be canceled. We could have an emergency backup here. Yeah. In exactly. case yeah. where yeah. if they need it in 48 hours. Can we whatever. do this on a trial basis? Because I just having it delivered to the Watkins was a constant problem. So, uh, did you have to call an order each time, or was it automatic? It was supposed to be automatic, but it wasn't. And then they didn't always, you know, they'd get a week or two off their delivery schedule. And so, if we can do it on a trial basis, mm -hmm. I just and it would be, I just find it hard to imagine they can really pull this off. Oh, well, they, the they, number of they, changes the. Because they, you know, starting and stopping, is, they're not good at. So I'm just saying, if we mm -hmm. could try it uh, on a trial basis to begin. Well, and if it's not working out for them, we can always hire someone else. Water yeah. But we need to that. find a company that has PFAS free water. And that's one really good thing about them. Not everybody has PFAS free water. No, that I understand. Yeah. That I understand. Delivers. Yeah. I mean, if you want, I wouldn't be the, I would be happy to be the one to set the person up and tell them this has got to happen or we're going to cancel the hire with them. So do we do like a three month trial or sure. we, is anybody getting water right now? Um, I think I still have one person. Okay. Do you know the length of time they will be continuing the water? It shouldn't be the person I'm trying to shouldn't be long. Yeah. Yeah. At all. So, so I, and I'm not time. sure who, yeah, the next round, I think with the completion of this round of testing, we should be okay. Okay. At this point, so it's all the lab reports because we have to get lab reports proving that it's a non detect after their pellets are installed, and that's the gap is trying to solve it. So, with the next one, you know, we establish the, the, the delivery with the next one, see how it goes, yeah. Um, you know, and then have it on automatic from the start. We'll be good. It'll just keep Eric, it'll yeah. just keep no, it messy. It's all good. 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 Yep. All right, then the last thing is time manager updates. All right, so if you are driving down West Hill Road, you might want to take a spin as on Friday um, through the school. Our new color is that they, they're down to the last side. It's completed three of the sides. Um, the upper deck is still the chimney needs to get done in another piece. But so you can take uh, a, a look at our new 
color at the school, and I hope you like it. I won't pee. I won't pee. Right. What? What did you say? What if we don't like it? Yeah, yeah, if we don't like it. What if we don't like it? <laughs> well, the principal don't say it. sign a <laughs> stamp of approval, so you'll have to talk with her. Okay. Um, and that brings me to the most exciting part of the day. Um, our new principal, Ann McGill, showed up at the Shootsbury Down Hall with a big tucker full of fresh made chocolate chip cookies <laughs> and went around to each of our offices introducing herself. Oh, um, I got to escort her because she told me she was going to do this. And I was just so excited. She really did. Um, so she got to meet all of our characters and people. Unfortunately, some were on vacation or not here, but for the most part, she met everyone. And she's um, very appreciative of her spirit and inclusiveness. I, I think we're going to have um, a good principal. Great. And the last thing is the plumber was there at 7.15 this morning um, working on the leak at the school, which is going to be potentially was going to hold up the finishing of the painting job, but with the repair done today uh, by plumber number two um, at half the cost, we are uh, very excited that that project is now done too. Here was the leak. The outdoor faucet from the kindergarten doors, um, we discovered when they were um, pulling off oh, the, the siding. rotted siding, because right, right. the siding was really, really bad, and it turned out the faucet was still leaking, so they, so they didn't want to cover it back up with a leak going on, because we would have had more rot. So mm. we've been patiently waiting, and now we'll be able to close up the building knowing that it's secure. So can I ask who is plum plumber number two? <laughs> and that might be time to put plumber case. number two in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> um, plumber number two is E.F. Plumbing from Belchertown, who I had never heard of. He was recommended by Ann Cook on the building committee. Most responsive, I just talked to him Friday. Work is done today. And um, while I did get the other plumber in last week, I. They didn't want to split out labor and parts, you know, like, and the price was almost $2,000 to replace a faucet. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so I kind of felt that yeah. there should always be a separation of materials. Yes, there should be. Um, but anyway, that, that's the end of my um, I just have a what questions do you have? On yeah, um, my only question is where things stand with GZA and the permitting for the dam. GZA. Um, That's so that GZA yes. is our in, uh, our engineer. All right, we have we have the hired dam. GZA. GZA had made um, a strong effort um, meeting with um, Natural Heritage to try to get accommodation and acknowledgement of our drawdown cycle being uh, ongoing for 50 years and to, they were they were they made a strong effort to make it exempt um that was not received well um we do have clarity on what they do want but it's led to uh, the next effort because they also are talking about doing state certification, that the town is going to be required to do state certification on a number of levels, on two different major permits that will cost more than what we had been looking at before. Um, because of this, last week I met with um, Adrian um, Dunn, I think is her last name, and the engineer at GZA, and Beth Wilson, our Kong Kong chair, to inquire what the process should be for the town to apply for an extension, mm -hmm. a potential three-year extension to the current notice of intent, um, and how they would look at that. So we are um, in ongoing conversation with ComCom. Um, well, Beth was going to talk to ComCom and then we'll meet with them and find out um, the potential for the extension. Do we need three years? Is it? Um, 
if we are required to do everything that natural heritage was talking about with the state certifications, it will be well over one year, possibly two. Um, so Adrian felt asking for three instead of coming up short and having to ask for a second one year extension was the wiser approach to take. Okay. And that whole notion of being grandfathered in and all that is just <laughs> gone. gone by the wayside. <laughs> that was such, seems like so beautiful to staff. Yeah, that would have been nice. Yeah. Um, speaking of dance, the other thing that has come together in this last, well, today, um, Dudleyville Dam, as you all were aware, we helped the town help secure DER funding for engineering. Uh, the engineer Stan Tech has put together um, a plan. I know Stan. Stan Tech, yeah. So they put together a plan to remove the majority of um, the current Dudleyville Dam under an emergency order. I believe Beth is issuing the emergency order from the CONCOM today. They had 30 days to do the work. The funds were secured last week. Um, so it, you'll probably see uh, quite a bit of activity. I'll try to alert you to when it will be happening exactly in the next 30 days. But we'll have a cha uh, dramatic change um, in the dam and then stabilizing the road and the culvert. I've already, um, I have a grant application in for um, doing engineering of the culvert. Stantec has also written and shared with me all their concerns and assistance that they could give on the culvert. Um, I use some of their information to apply for the grant and I haven't heard back yet. Um, so we hope to receive that grant. And who is that grant from? Uh, that is also a DER grant. And that wasn't anything we needed to sign off on. It was like the grant application for, for us. Um, no. no, it was a small grant. I believe I told you I was working on it. It was back in like March, February or March, when um, the DER folks had alluded. <coughs> And DER pay is is paying for the removal of the the Dudleyville Dam. No, who's paying the, for that? Uh, um, Lois Brown. Oh, Lois is a private for it. Oh, okay. dam, and she has, I believe, had to, she's found a way to secure, secure funding between her son and herself. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't have anything else. No. Yeah. Yes. We've hit the end. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So Becky can print the warrant. Oh, right. Yes, so moved. We'll just Second. wait, right, we'll wait, wait right here. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Carol, right. aye. Cookies upstairs. Make you feel <laughs> like <laughs> Susie. I saw your eyes light up at the mention of chocolate well, chips. Of course. Yeah. Um, no, they, I think they were all gone by the time she left.